because I would like uh, to some extent uh, uh, to talk about uh, AMO as the only vehicle that enables us to do utopian things, even though we cannot name them utopian okay. or even though they're not necessarily officially utopian. So, so for example, the reason is that uh, how and why, yeah. for example, AMO stuff. Okay. Um, I, th I think that uh, to for the and why uh, of uh, AMO, I think it's important to um, understand the drastic uh, or the coincidence uh, of our start as an architectural office, let's say in 1980, and um, to look at the same time uh, at the start of a new political system uh, at that uh, point, which was uh, triggered by the simultaneous uh, election of uh, Ronald Reagan and uh, Margaret Thatcher and uh, therefore the beginning of neoliberalism and uh, the beginning of the um, uh, market economy uh, as we know it. So uh, I think from the beginning uh, our existence as an office coincides with that moment and uh, I think that is a badly understood kind of part of, of our whole office because it, it seems uh, as if, and, and maybe my own metaphors have been uh, uh, responsible for uh, establishing that myth, but it seems as if we, from the very beginning, were extremely eager to go along with this market economy. And uh, maybe my metaphor of the surfer uh, kind of suggested also a kind of certain pleasure uh, or fun, but, but actually, uh, what I intended uh, with that metaphor was to um, talk about the, the force and the inevitability of a wave and how you could, uh, as a kind of fragile uh, individual or a kind of fragile kind of profession, uh, somehow remain standing in that wave. Um, and uh, I would have to say that, uh, therefore, uh, I'm, I'm pleading for a kind of rereading of our whole uh, career, not so much as a, a, a group that uh, embraced something, but uh, as a group that was very critical from the very beginning at, at the phenomena uh, it encountered and, and basically tried to find, uh, on one hand, uh, a way to operate within a system that seemed inevitable, but also to find within a system that was inevitable, uh, kind of significant and plausible uh, efforts and enterprises and, and projects. So uh, th that, that is the beginning. Yeah? And I think uh, after, let's say, the, the first 15 years, which you could say was kind of simply the experimental but also uh, incredible kind of focus on trying to find clients, trying to do the first buildings and trying to learn uh, the profession. Uh, it became very important for me to uh, become less dependent uh, on all those uh, forces. Uh, on the one hand, uh, uh, simply uh, those forces became stronger and stronger. So that also made it more, more important to, to find way of independence uh, from them uh, and to um, in a way uh, reinvent or find an intellectual apparatus that could help us uh, navigate uh, the groundswell of the market economy uh, and we, because that is really how I see the, the, the kind of period from 1995 uh, to, to now. Right? 20 years of operating within that system without necessarily a lot of sympathy for that system. Um, and um, so I was looking for an in independent entity or a way that would enable me to develop an independent uh, position. Uh, I had always done that as a writer. Uh, and so 
but now I felt that uh, I needed something stronger than kind of simply my own kind of writing, but, but uh, I needed to really equip the office with uh, 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 its own intelligence producing uh, entity. And, and there were three simultaneous things that, that reinforced it. Uh, 95 was the year that I published small, medium, large, extra large. Uh, it was the year I started teaching in Harvard and it was the year that we started working on Universal. And so basically all those things were uh, coinciding and, and uh, intensifying uh, this ambition or the urgency of this ambition because uh, small, medium, large, extra large had documented the kind of madness uh, uh, Universal was an incredible opportunity, uh, but also so radically different, seemingly a classical opportunity to do a masterpiece in the kind of Mies van der Rohe situation, but actually a totally different and radically changed kind of situation where uh, it was very questionable whether that ma kind of masterpiece was still possible. And so, uh, the, the Harvard then kind of offered me, you know, a further incentive to to set that up. And um, I don't know whether when we actually st first started uh, the notion of AMO, do you know that? I think at least again for what uh, ninety nine, ninety nine, maybe ninety nine. But of course, it was also kind of part of the Venice Biennale. Uh, uh, where we had to sign neon sign Oma, which from the other sign you could say Emma. So we had already worked with that kind of reversal, and so in in the late nineties it became kind of possible to to actually make it explicit. Mm -hmm. And you know there there were many incentives. So on one hand, it was uh, a way to create a kind of our own intelligence intelligence bureau. It was also uh, a platform on with which we could collaborate with other people because in the context of an office it can be quite burdensome uh, and, and we needed something kind of much lighter and which was geared toward collaboration kind of rather than to work uh, on our own. And, and that is why we collaborated from the kind of very beginning with people like uh, Chris Dirkon, Hans Ulrich Obrist, uh, and have continued to work uh, systematically in AMO together with a very wide range of people. And um, But there was also, of course, a financial incentive, uh, because in a way, one thing that small, medium, large, extra large did was to uh, to reveal even to ourselves how important the economy was in, in terms of uh, survival and in, in terms of performance. And so we also thought that kind of uh, by starting AMO we could actually charge money for what we were doing anyway. I mean, we were kind of reinventing institutions, we were doing research, we were doing a whole lot of things that were not typically part of the kind of architectural profession. So we thought it would also be you know, uh, a, a different economy, and and maybe in a very simple way, it would be you could be an architect and a consultant at the same time. And do you think that uh, that uh, let's say now Amo, let's say if the date of the birth is mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the nineties, is like fifteen years mm -hmm. now, do you feel that uh, being the context so change it is how the evolution of Amo at reacted to that or uh well i think that the um by definition emo is a kind of reflection of their time uh, and it is also an entity that tries to do independent things uh. and so uh, on the one hand it's uh, following and on the other hand it is trying to create a kind of position outside uh, and I, I would say that kind of in terms of a position outside, uh, last year's Biennale was, was perhaps the strongest uh, things we've done because it was you know, taking complete, stepping completely outside, uh, um, completely outside also of our own work and, 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 and being directly involved and commenting on a kind of particular moment. Uh, so I think that that is a, 
you know, huge evolution, uh, and and maybe it it has to to do with uh, the the credibility that we established over over time. Um, on the other hand, uh, some kind of recent uh, uh, kind of projects, uh, such as the, 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 you know everything we're doing for Paris, I think in the other m maybe more in the light of what we try to do with uh, Universal, yeah. to find in corporate culture um, the incentives and the spaces uh, for doing radical things. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, Rem, uh, you <coughs> in the last period, uh, mm -hmm. uh, for example, you raise certain issues about, for example, agriculture. Mm -hmm. in there are now this kind of work that has been done on sustainability. Yeah. There has been a, in between the work done for the European Community, mm -hmm. and uh, um, I have the feeling that uh, the context has changed. Yeah. Also for so you still have this corporate uh, mm. culture that uh, you in a certain way are uh, infiltrating. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah, infiltrating. Uh, I never liked that word. Yeah, uh, because okay, it was sorry. a typical uh, hypocritical word of our generation. Okay, uh, I would uh, on the contrary say, say it uh, engaged. Engaged. Okay, yeah. uh, but uh, on, but on the other side, uh, you have uh, uh, much more. How can I say public? Uh, um, I'm thinking also the other exhibition you did at Biennale in Venice on civil servants, mm -hmm. uh, um, the idea of um, yeah, uh, so conservation and this. So it seems that uh, the contest change, you're registering that inside the work of uh, Yeah, so, so, so there are basically two conditions. There is basically the following uh, uh, and, and, and the, the, the events in, in the real world, but also uh, commenting uh, on the events in the real world, yeah. So b basically, th there is this uh, engagement, I would say, and and there's a critique, and those there is a kind of constant alternation. But uh, I I really felt that um, uh, the kind of production of critique uh, is is something we could never do without that uh, uh, organization, except me as a writer. But. Uh, after the years New York, it became very important to to have an apparatus that can simply produce insight and 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 therefore uh, alert to uh, to um, create a kind of body of evidence that enables us to to take a critical position, and that is then partly AMO and partly Harvard, and and the two are frankly kind of almost one in, in many cases. Because there is a scheme uh, that mm -hmm. uh, was uh, mm -hmm. traced uh, down here, yeah. Yeah. in which uh, you have all the different kind of... Uh, yeah, but you probably have hundreds of versions of this. Uh, yeah, and, 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 and so that, that, that is the typical kind of situation. I think that that is the p most pure. Yes. Uh, and, uh, or, or even without this uh, kind of ring uh, around. Uh, uh, and 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 many, but but yeah. it's definitely also a constellation, and the constellation changes permanently. So that is why. Is uh, uh, Strelka playing a similar role to Harvard, or is very different? I think that uh, uh, it's different uh, in the sense that um, what I found uh, very interesting in Strelka is that we were asked to uh, set up uh, an educational entity from scratch uh, and uh, we were also asked to create something that was not necessarily kind of in interested in academic credentials but that was uh, interested in uh, offering a different kind of education that could um, help people that had been that graduated uh, in, in terms of further uh, abilities to, to formulate uh, positions and, and insights. And, and what was very interesting for me uh, about it is that uh, I find something inherently sad about academic education that once you fin finish, have an MA, the only way in which you continue is a PhD, where you kind of disappear you know, kind of for years in, in a kind of gulag. 
uh, and, and where sometimes the results are amazing but uh, and, and this was something more more modern uh, and, and more about uh, how architecture also needed uh, different vocabularies different uh, abilities different uh, different qualities yeah? and, and so what was interesting what is wonderful in Harvard is to have an apparatus that can help you think and that can execute uh, kind of research. What was interesting about uh, Stuelka is uh, an opportunity to to help to redefine the architecture profession. Yeah? And and uh, I, I must say that the last year's Biennale was also very exciting for me because I thought the Russian pavilion was one of the strongest there and that was totally done by Stuelka uh, graduates and you know some of those came straight from the Ural Mountains yeah? uh, so uh, as an ex educational experiment uh, I find it very um, uh, wonderful successful yeah, yeah not successful but but interesting for us yeah, huh? yeah uh, in the you said you know I'm on Arva sometimes was uh, the same thing but my feeling that in uh, Arbor you were able to, with a s s series of intuitions, you were mm. able to say, okay, these are mm. the topic I'm interested mm. in, and maybe then there was a coincidence with mm. the office. How is instead with uh, Emo? Is some is the problem he's brought by, let's say, a client or the like someone world. an outside yeah. mm. that is coming? Mm. It's like how you are able to do that, that thing of like registering and pushing your own uh, critique somehow if the set of question comes from well so, so basically I, I think that uh, what is very valuable is these these positions mm -hmm. or rather the work we have done to uh, to uh, to create these uh, positions enables us to do this kind of work in, in a smarter way but also in in a kind of more critical way I mean uh, uh, for instance we are trying very hard now to kind of work with uh, Silicon Valley, uh, I think the work here definitely enables us to, uh, on the one hand, offer something uh, interesting, uh, but also perhaps work with more intelligence. I think the word intelligence gathering is, is perhaps the best, the best word, which you know also simply uh, explains it as a need, uh, and and the need was simply that. After 15 years of market economy, it became so complex to uh, understand what architecture still was, uh, uh, but it was no longer, and, and what it could be. I mean, basically, those kind of three questions are, uh, of course, more and more agonizing, you could say. Uh, when you sp speak of uh, Stryka or also Harvard, uh, did you try to introduce, how can I say, uh, I'm not speaking of a, a method mm -hmm. or a way of thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, did, how did, did you try to transfer there a kind of a perspective, a, a way of looking at things mm -hmm. that... Uh, well, uh, uh, my, the, 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 the greatest, uh, pre, the greatest, um, quality of my relationship with Harvard has been that uh, I was hired by Dean Peter Rowe, yeah. who um, accepted the fact that I did not want to uh, be involved in design, but even accepted the fact that I declared myself ignorant uh, <laughs> of certain things, uh, and that I wanted to learn uh, together with the students, uh, because it, the, the whole trigger in Harvard was that <clears throat> Basically, I saw um, uh, a studio where uh, uh, Americans were explaining to the students what to do with uh, abandoned harbor piers in, in the harbor of Boston and how to rehabilitate them uh, to an audience of Asians and, and where I simply said, you know, an abandoned harbor pier hardly exists in Asia, so this is no longer relevant uh, knowledge and we have to to adjust, but the, the beauty was that you know I gave got the freedom for that, and so in that sense, 
uh, I see Harvard uh, as a as a kind of amplifier, uh, not of knowledge but of ignorance, and and as a uh, an efficient way of uh, undoing ignorance. No, I I'm asking you that because I was there when you said to the students, you know, that uh, you have to be also naive uh, mm -hmm. in uh, looking at these kind of things. You know, you have to address that uh, without preconcepts. Well, it it was also. It, it's also, of course, related, uh, let's say, and, and, and that is, I think, something we've always tried to do and which in many ways uh, has been uh, kind of responsible for creating some misunderstandings about our, our real and true motivation. Um, what, what I found fascinating is that through globalization, the composition of the student body changes radically. And that means that I instead of classes that are more or less homogeneous and that have a kind of one-to-one -one need to learn from a kind of central authority, uh, you can see the student body as a, a, a group of experts to the extent that Chinese is an expert in Chinese, at least. Uh, and, uh, and so that there was an enormous amplification of what you could do with student bodies other than kind of simply uh, uh, creating knowledge or transferring knowledge. Transferring knowledge. Yeah. And, uh, the, um, and so that's why there, there was always a kind of typecasting for each group. And that's why, for instance, in Lagos Project, we, we worked also with uh, Nigerian students that were matched one to one to, to Harvard students. Yes, um, there are certain projects, like let's say the work you have done for uh, Europe, yeah. uh, let's say that mm -hmm. I think is also a multifaceted yeah, project yeah. because um, it's from an idea of like what the city yeah. of Bruxelles then yeah. become a, a transnational yeah, uh, yeah. City, uh, capital somehow. Yeah. Um, so to work uh, with a different set of problems, uh, but also then to arrive to a different response that if you will have to add uh, this yeah, as a kind of, course, of like... Uh, of course, that, that is the intention. Yeah. And, it's, uh, and I, th I think I, I could not, um, to some extent, uh, let's say the identity of OMA and the identity of AMO are artificial creations. Yeah. Uh, it's very often the same people who kind of work, but, but it enables us to create clarity inside and outside. And, and as such, it has kind of really worked uh, uh, kind of very well. And yes, I would say it, I can prove that it enabled us to do many different things that as a simple architecture office we could never have done. So. Uh, you spoke before uh, of uh, um, EMO as a possibility mm. to produce a uh, uh, utopic uh, mm. ideas, a vision inside of the context that otherwise was not allowing right. you to do that. Uh, for example, how, how do you, at the beginning, mm -hmm. how was this uh, uh, in respect, for example, to Universal or uh, to Prada, which was mm -hmm. kind of, uh, uh, all is clear. Yeah. Uh, uh, how uh, was the kind of... Uh, well, I think in, 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 in Universal uh, and in Prada, we were uh, definitely not we, we were, I think, uh, from the beginning aware, you know, that we were not uh, working on a kind of in a utopic uh, dimension. Okay. Because um, clearly, for a private company, the, the the even the pretension to be utopian would be would be strange. But here, we were working for the state, and yeah. and uh, I, I think there's another interesting for me uh, 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 paradox that we have in, in intellectual sense uh, kind of really analyzed what the market economy means. But if you look at our actual work and our actual clients, we are very, very often, maybe uh, three quarter of our work is not for private clients and is in a kind of very old fashioned traditional way for uh, municipalities or cities or uh, countries or states. And I think that's not uh, not a coincidence. Yeah. Uh, that that is to uh, through a kind of uh, recognition of those states that actually we produce that kind of other architecture still. And 
the work you have done on, um, let's say, Universal and, um, and Prada has been also very much about them as a, an organization. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, one of the things I've read of like Universal was at one point you made them so aware of, of, well, yeah, of it, their... It, 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 I think this is the kind of rare moment uh, where, where that happened. I, I kind of realized that they were um, doing things uh, that were so uh, random uh, and that uh, what they were trying to do is kind of to put, uh, merge an, um, liquor with um, film uh, and internet and, uh, and and so basically then we produce this diagram yep. simply to make them kind of recognize the stretch uh, that they were doing and 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 also we were calculating or and this this was another very uh, crucial diagram um, this was the program but but basically after six uh, months of work uh, i think more than two-thirds of the program had disappeared or changed so that basically we needed to show to them that the kind of stability that you need to create a masterpiece was simply not kind of present uh, in these circumstances and that you the, the best we could do was and that was this one was almost like a like a road map a kind of rather than a kind of final final kind of thing and and actually we um we also calculated uh, the kind of square uh, the price per square foot uh, for Seagram and the budget that we had and basically the uh, price per square foot for of Seagram was 10 times as much as we we had and and that kind of simply showed how drastically the the the, 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 the architecture is declining kind of in value uh, you uh but uh, I think that you know my mistake has, has perhaps been to be uh, too enthusiastic about those insights uh, in, instead of uh, <laughs> instead of uh, 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 moaning uh, and, uh, and, and uh, considering myself a martyr. <laughs> no, uh, but I was curious about like all this work that you have done in anal analyzing, mm -hmm. you know, for example, their own uh, mm -hmm. uh, organization. Is something that then is a kind of like self conscious uh, work that you bring back and you kind of like organize or look at also your your like at Oma Amo in a kind of like observing also how your own company well, organization course, uh, of, of course it's kind of uh, it, it's creating narratives you know, or, yeah. or portraits or kind of reflections or mirror mirror images and kind of to, to the extent that you do it for others, uh, of course, you, you perpetually also do it for yourself. Mm. And, um, and, and I have to say that uh, uh, one of the things that has uh, preoccupied me in the last five years is kind of really the formation of the office as a, as a creation yeah? and, and as a kind of entity and as an organization. So at least as much as I'm kind of talk, yep. uh, talking about others. And, and what you would like, um, let's say, AMO to work on? There are like topics that, uh, I know that also is based on like, what are the... Mm -hmm. uh, well, I, I think that the, the, the countryside is a kind of really uh, huge uh, subject. And uh, I think that, that is definitely something uh, I want to uh, work on and I think that will take uh, years and uh, uh, there, are, there are some other kind of parallel issues uh, and of course we also have to kind of really think uh, about what everybody else is uh, thinking about. I mean in other words you have to do the obvious uh, and, and the not obvious uh, mm -hmm. at the same time. Uh. <coughs> When uh, you started uh, AMO, there were some... Uh, yeah, and, and we, we have to be uh, very careful in our vocabulary because it is always a we. Yeah? It's yeah. not the, because I didn't start it, it was kind of just a consolation. Uh, and then, uh, for instance, in the beginning, uh, 
Bruce Mao was a kind of very important kind of partner yeah. simply in developing a kind of visual language uh, for it. Uh, uh, Hans Ulrich was a kind of very uh, important uh, uh, partner with Chris Nerkon to begin to think about the art world and what all the phenomena that were uh, going to take place in, in there. So, and but but it was always the market economy plus the art world, the market economy plus uh, agriculture, the market economy plus. Uh, at the beginning, it was a lot of uh, reference to the media and huh? to internet. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you see that uh, uh, today in respect to AMO? Th that was a specific context in that moment. But for example, you were speaking before of Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. So uh, how this uh, interest or this kind of uh, framing of the context has changed? Well, it's very uh, strange in a certain way because um, before or b before I was an architect in in 1974, I lived in uh, Hollywood, uh, writing a script with a Dutch friend. Uh, his name is uh, René Dalder, and we were uh, writing a script for Russ Meyer. And as a very sick, important part of that uh, script uh, was about the effect of the digital on movies, uh, and. Uh, and 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 then that was kind of really uh, I would say the the quality of my friend when I dealt there to have this very early preoccupation with the digital as a kind of uh, force that was going to change everything. Uh, and so you can see that um, that that kind of from the very beginning uh, the awareness that. Uh, something big was about to happen uh, was was there and and also uh, a kind of attempt to kind of think about the implications was all, always there for, for instance that was in 74 in uh, 89 we were working on the uh, big library uh, project in uh, france there we had worked with philips and if you read the text of uh, the uh, Dragon Bibliotheque, you see that we, we have anticipated the whole idea of a tablet and an electronic kind of thing where you can kind of both read and, and, and look at films, and etc. So it's always there. And, and so, so if you look at that, you could say that one way of reading the last uh, uh, recent decades is that somehow the the digital never delivered uh, what what it seemed to be able to deliver and and that uh, there is always this imminent revolution that that is going to do it but uh still the yes it's, it's still that that moment is still the, yeah. always there but it's also always receding yeah. maybe i don't know you always uh, pay the, uh, also for uh, um, a lot of attention to a publication mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. component. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, already the work of your office uh, is quite interesting mm -hmm. because of the publication. Mm -hmm. the say, I call publication, you mm -hmm. can call it in other ways, strategy mm -hmm. that you have. But also Emo paid a lot of attention mm -hmm. to this publication mm -hmm. strategy. You did very different things. Mm -hmm. There was also a, a project of a, a magazine mm -hmm. there. Uh, and plus, there is all uh, your publication strategy mm. as a, an author. Mm. How do you look at that? Uh, c could you look at that altogether? Do you think there is a special strategy for AMO for the publication or something different? Uh, uh, you have uh, the magazine, uh, you have the catalog uh, of the exhibition content. Uh, mm. Well, I think that it, it's. Uh, when I hear you kind of use the word strategy um, many times uh, in, in kind of one sentence, uh, I, I really uh, think it's there is no strategy. It's more a kind of incurable uh, condition or passion for uh, words and, uh, and, uh, and a kind of deep affinity with the topology of the book uh, and, uh, and almost 
uh, insatiable curiosity about uh, the world. So that that takes constantly different. Uh, uh, but on the other hand, I, in terms of strategy, I have found that uh, it is a quite an efficient way of getting uh, points of view across, even now, uh, uh, and and simply because it enables you to say more than kind of in a Twitter or kind of say I like or I don't like. I mean, it's it's still uh, a efficient way to convey complexities. And w what do you you wanted to do with the with the magazine, the AMO magazine? No, the, the AMO ma no, what what actually this was. Uh, th what well, we didn't want to do our own magazine. What we wanted to do is to infiltrate other magazines, mm -hmm. and so we uh, we wanted to do an issue of Very Match, uh, an issue of the Spiegel, an issue of uh, this, an issue of Espresso, and actually this one we were able to do and. Uh, uh, with the Spiegel, I almost uh, succeeded uh, to do an English-speaking issue of the Spiegel with the then editor, but then then he was fired. So uh, it no, 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 <laughs> no, tot totally unrelated. Uh, but so it was more about infiltration and 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 to exploit the the kind of aura of each of these uh, magazines, uh, and 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 of course to. Uh, I think magazines are so interesting in the sense that you know they theoretically could say anything, but but each of them is limited and defined by a kind of certain territory that it uh, covers. But when you were doing these uh, special issues, uh, mm -hmm. and you had the idea to do the, the three yeah, issues did, uh, of the did, magazine every year. Yeah, we did the Domus also. Yeah, uh, the Domus. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, that was also kind of really an issue, and then and then yeah, the content was also uh, in a way a magazine. Yeah. And then Almanac is also a magazine, so yeah, yeah, I have to admit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but you say you are producing a magazine of uh, uh, individual issues uh, every time, different, mm, yeah, very different yeah, ideas. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's okay. Same Look, way. if you have uh, Rama to tell, um, if you wanted to summarize this uh, strategy that mm. uh, is very clear there. Mm but also the changing uh, of uh, some of these uh, interests that you mm. could register. W which could be the, could you name uh, the project that for you are more uh, significant in respect uh, to, to uh, AMO idea? Uh, Amy to those. Does it make sense to, to say the obvious? Everything. Then I take a position no, of AMO no, saying no, I would no, like to no, context no, the audience. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah I d well, obviously, uh, Universal was very important. Obviously, uh, uh, no, I, I, I don't think I, I should uh, kind of distinguish it because it's kind of simply a way, you know, of, of avoiding uh, kind of entropy. I mean, if you're in an office situation, uh, unless there is a, a constant uh, turbulence or a constant redefinition or a constant uh, influence of, of other forces and, and response to other forces, uh, the, the kind of result is a kind of stagnation. And, and I think it is one thing which is, you know, anyone can see that in the market economy stagnation is the kind of... Uh, cardinal uh, sin or cardinal impossibility and and so on the one hand we were f forced to do this or this is you know an, a, an, a self defense against uh, stagnation and a, a really a very deliberate um, creation of an entity that uh, is able to consistently kind of modernize and reinvent uh, and at the same time, I could also explain uh, our whole work as a kind of very linear uh, sequence of uh, uh, a few pursuits over a very long time. In other words, I can explain it as jumping from one area to another or in a, a kind of in almost a, a, horrifying uh, consistent consistency. Uh, evolution. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, perhaps we missed some other things that you would like to say about it. Uh, uh, no, not really. No.
Are you sure? Yeah. And is in the, the next, sorry, the, go ahead. Just one uh, last uh -huh. curious thing. Is the issue of time dealt differently at OMA or AMO? I thought that like one of the things was also that um, the idea was that you can actually with AMO produce a, yeah. a certain kind of work with the, with the speed that is of different course. from architecture. <coughs> Uh, the, the, uh, interesting. It, it, that's kind of really interesting question because um, initially it was kind of very clear cut. Yes, you could do things in here that, uh, for instance, this maybe took four months. Uh, that uh, you know, in architecture, takes four years. But the the paradox is that architecture is going faster and faster, and and so that uh, the time is not very far away that you mm -hmm. can do architecture. That 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 difference is is going to be a little bit. Erased. Mm. Uh. And uh, if you look, uh, sorry, because uh, I didn't uh, ask <laughs> a stupid <laughs> question. Uh, in a certain way, in uh, some of your comments at the beginning, we were speaking of a kind of uh, an architecturalization of the other discipline that are incorporating the idea of architecture. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if you look back uh, today at uh, the experiment, the work you did with uh, uh, Emo, um, do you feel uh, that uh, this architectural thinking has uh, been uh, successful in uh, <coughs> operating in the other fields, in, in the uh, other yeah, in the yeah, situation? Yeah, I, I know what you're saying. I think that um, that's also a very interesting uh, issue uh, because I um, there there are two observations. I think that you know, in 30 years ago, I was very skeptical about the profession of architecture, uh, and exactly because in this beginning of this beginning of the kind of acceleration, let's say, I thought that architecture was very old-fashioned and and that all its values were um, handicaps in terms of uh, doing the kind of work you needed to do to to understand the new context. Uh, and um, so I, I thought myself that the profession was not uh, deeply kind of relevant or, or would be almost uh, become redundant and, and maybe I was thinking at the time that what we were doing was kind of to, to modernize the profession then there was this kind of moment that suddenly everyone started to talk about architecture and then I began to realize that exactly the uh, that architecture was uh, almost uh, the last remaining profession that had a connection with the past, huh? and and uh, the last remaining uh, profession where the the stretch is like five thousand years, uh, and and uh, that I, I suddenly began to see that as a kind of a deeply valuable thing. So maybe. Th that is a kind of sign of conservatism, or it is a kind of sign of seeing that, you know, a profession that seemed awkward now suddenly turns out to have a, a lot of virtues that, that are becoming very rare. Mm. 